Hello and welcome to this Trade Radiators video. Today we're going to show you how to remove this small radiator and install in its place a heated curved towel rail. There are a couple of things you need to think about when choosing a new towel rail. Firstly, you need to find out whether it's actually going to fit in the space you want to fit it in. The one we're going to be fitting here is 600mm wide. We've already measured that and it fits fine. Also make sure that the height is okay and also make sure that the BTU or British Thermal Units will be enough to heat up the room that it's going in. So before we begin, make sure you turn all your heating system off, make sure it's fully drained down, and then we can get started. So firstly, once you've turned everything off and drained down the system, we just remove this old radiator here, slack off the two nuts that you've got, pop it out of the way, and then lift the radiator off out of the way and remove the two brackets. Once you've taken the old brackets off, try to get the old plugs out by putting the screw in, just partly, and then wiggling the plug out. Now make good your old holes with a suitable filler and clean off. At this stage, I'd recommend removing your old valves and putting new ones on with the new radiator. So at this point now that we unpack our new radiator, make sure not to score the radiator with a knife when you're taking the packaging off, and also when you've got it off, make sure there's no damage in transit. At this point, be very careful when taking the packaging off. You have a small box inside one of the rungs that has all our fittings and brackets on it. Pop this to one side just for now. Before we continue, it's important that we have a look at the radiator that we're fitting. This here is a Faroli radiator. It has a few slight advantages over the other towel radiators in the industry. Mainly, it has a 25 millimeter bar instead of a 21 millimeter bar, which means its heat output is much, much greater. It can therefore heat the room and also heat your towels. It's of Italian design and also they've got one factory fitted blank at the top so there's nothing there. Your air vent at one side so you've only got one joint to worry about at the top. Also it's a curved towel radiator but that actually when it comes to standing out proud only comes to about five millimeters. So you can get that curved action in there, get a lot more towel tucked in but it's only sticking out five millimeters more than a normal straight towel radiator. Also, Ferroli do a comprehensive 12 year guarantee, and that's not just on the surface. Let's move on to the next stage of how we actually install one of these towel radiators. So what we do first is we take off our cap here and remove this small black insert at the top of the radiator. Go back to our small box, open it carefully and keep everything in it. Now you'll notice in the box itself, we have all our brackets, we'll come to those in a minute. We also have our plugs and our screws. This small bag here contains the air bleed that we need. All we do is it's got a rubber O-ring around it already so it doesn't need any sealant on it. Pop it in here and then tighten that up with an adjustable spanner. Now is a good time to make sure that the bleed is shut. Otherwise it would come as a shock later on in this job. Now we need to think about the connections at the other end. We've got a new thermostatic radiator valve here. And we've also got a new straight lock shield. Each one of these valves will have a small spigot on the end. So we've got the one here for the lock shield and we've got one here on the TRV. Both these need to be sealed up with a thread seal. Now you can either use PTFE or you can use hemp and paste or you can use Loctite thread seal, it's up to you. So we're gonna use PTFE on these threads. A good 10 or 15 rounds to do the trick. Now we go back to the other end of the radiator where you've got your flow and return pipes going in. Pop off both of the two protective plastic layers, pop your spigot that you've already threaded into the thread and then tighten it up with an adjustable spanner, but don't tighten it up too far. Once you've done that, do that to the other side and then we're ready to actually look at how to hang the radiator on the wall. Right, so let's go back to our box of brackets. Now, there's a thing you need to notice about these that are especially important for curved radiators. This part here that attaches to the radiator itself, they all attach in the same way, but the piece that compensates for the curve when you're going onto a flat wall is this angled piece here. You also have an adjustment on these with a screw there. You can put a small screw in when you're finished later and then have it sitting out of the wall as far as you like. This allows you to pack a lot more towels on, but obviously means that the radiator sticks more out into the room. So what you need to do first is get all four of your brackets, pop these off and pop them to one side, pop off the special fascia as well, and pop that to one side and keep them safe. All you wanna be working with for this next bit are these pieces here. Firstly, build up each one of the brackets that's on the radiator itself. Now, what you wanna do is get as far out to the side as possible, pop your back bracket on, then your front bracket, and then the screw through your front bracket like this, straight on like that. So we pop the back up here like this, then pop our front piece in, making sure that the grooves go in the right place 
and then tighten that up with the screwdriver. The thing you must look out for when tightening these up is to make sure that the small hole here is facing downwards on every one of your brackets. Do that to all four corners, one here, one here, and two at the bottom as far apart as you can get them. The next thing we need to do is find out where you want the centre of your radiator to be. Now on a lot of installs you might be really lucky and you might be able to just change the radiator straight onto the pipes that you're using. But a lot of the time that doesn't happen. We can't go any further over to the left hand side because there's a mirror further up. So we have to go on where this pipe is here. Sometimes you'll find that your pipes are narrow, you can put the radiator over the top of that, measure up from the centre and then pipe up into your new rad like that. It's not quite as simple on this job. So there are a few ways for, if you want to find out your centres. Ignoring these two pipes here, sometimes you want it in the centre of a wall, so you measure out the wall width. If it's 100, divide that by 2, you've got 50, mark that, okay, and that'll be your centre there. Because we've got this problem here with this pipe, we're actually going to have to measure out from this pipe over to find out where our centre is. The radiator width itself is 600 millimetres wide. The width between the spigots for the pipe inlets themselves is 550 millimetres. If we divide that by two, that's 275. We measure over from the centre of our pipe here, 275, just to there, and there is the centre of our radiator. Make all marks with a pencil and try to make all measuring marks up as small as you possibly can. Now you know your centre on the wall, you now want to decide how high up the wall you want your radiator to be. We've had a look on the wall and we've decided we want the radiator's bottom to be roughly in the line of this grout line here. So what you do, you measure up from where you want the bottom of your radiator to be to the centre of your bracket. So here that works at about 9.5 centimetres. So we go back to here, we've got our centre here still. So we measure up 9.5 centimetres and make a small mark at that height. All these marks will be able to rub off. Right, so we know the centre and the height of where we want our bottom brackets to come from. What we want to do now is flip round our radiator, pop over our bracket sheaths so the face will be against the wall, grab your tape measure and measure the distance between the two. Here it is 480 millimetres. So we've got our centre line here, 480 divided by 2 is 240. So measure out 240 there and mark the wall, and then measure out 240 there and mark the wall. Then grab yourself a smaller spirit level, make sure that your spirit is resting on that height there because that's the height of our radiator. Make sure the bubble is in the middle, draw a line across here and a line across here and do the same again upwards just there in line with the mark we've just made, our 240 mark and the same one there. Now we know where our two bottom brackets are going to go. They're at exactly the right place for the centre there and they're also their height is exactly right and their widths are exactly right to take the brackets. The next thing we do is get our spirit level and carry on our dashed line all the way up. Just carry on my dashed line all the way up here. Right, so the next measurement we need to determine is the distance from the bottom brackets to the top brackets. It's easily done. Pop in one of your brackets here and then measure from the centre of that bracket to the centre of the bracket down below. That's a height of 160. Go from our horizontal line that we put here earlier and measure up 160. If you need to, use your spirit level again to carry on your dashed line that you've put up the centre already and finish that over the 160 mark you've done there. We already know the widths of our brackets here, so we just again measure out 240 and just make sure they add up properly and then use our spirit level again to make sure that they're fully level. One thing I'd recommend now is to re-measure all your brackets, do exactly what we said again, just go through everything, use your spirit levels. There's a saying in the trade, you measure twice or cut a drill once. So I'm going to re-measure all mine quickly, make sure my levels are all okay, and then I'm going to prepare to drill the holes. All for early radiators come supplied with plugs and screws for you to use. Personally, if I'm drilling out a tile wall, I'll use a masonry bit with a hammer turned off, start off with a smaller bit, and then go up to the bit size that you need. The plugs supplied here are for a 10 mil drill bit. So set your drill so it's not on hammer, just start off nice and slowly. Then extend the hole out. Drill out all the holes just like that. 
make sure you wear eye protection and make sure you use the right drill bit for the right plug. Once you've got each one of those plugs in, just give them a little tap in with a hammer and then we're ready to actually hang our radiator on the wall. Now all we need to do is get the screw that's supplied, pop that into our wall bracket, make sure that you've got an R on the right hand side. So all the R's go down the right hand side of the radiator and all the L's go down the left hand side. Now screw them lightly in with a hand screwdriver. Do that to all four corners. Now it's time to see whether all your measuring and all your spirit levelling has paid off. You might need a little bit of help doing this because the radiators can be quite heavy. Swing your radiator around, lift it up and then pop it into the brackets. There's the two top ones in. And there's our two bottom ones in. As soon as possible get your small grub screw that was supplied with the radiator, adjust the distance out you want the radiator to be from the wall and then pop the grub screw in the hole and secure the radiator to the wall. Do that to all four brackets. Then the radiator is secure to the wall. Once you've put your grub screws on you can put your decorative fascias over the front of your screw heads. So there we go, we've safely got the new towel rail on the wall, it's nice and sturdy and now what I'm going to do is pipe it up. We're not going to show you how to do that in this particular video because this video is all about measuring up, finding out which size radiator you should use, how to install it to the wall. But you can watch us do it really, really quickly if you like. So there we go, you've learned how to mark out and install a curved towel rail. I hope you found this video informative and helpful and if you need any more help, visit our website at traderadiators.com. Thanks very much. Bye bye.